Welcome back friends to Let's Play The Legends of Zelda. This is Mike A10. So we're in the middle of level 1 here and we're going to move along to the next room. And we have uh, the bat enemies again. These guys are actually called Keys or Keeses or Keysai depending on how you want to pronounce it in plural. They're easy to kill. Um, this item here is the compass. Now every level has a compass and as I grab that you can see it puts a red blinking dot up in the area where our map will be. Um, that basically indicates the room where the Triforce piece is being held. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of what direction you want to be heading. So every level or dungeon has that. Kill some more of these guys. Now, uh, some rooms you'll get um, locked doors that can only be opened by killing all the enemies, such as that door there. And of course you have your locked doors that are opened by keys, such as that one right there. Alright, and uh, so now some more new enemies here. These guys are little small blobs that are easy to kill. I always thought they looked like Hershey Kisses, so... That's kind of how I associate them there. Now you notice that door did not open when we killed them all, and that is because this obvious looking rock or boulder or block in the middle needs to be pushed in order to open that. And as we enter here, we get an old man giving us the first advice that we get in the game. Eastmost Peninsula is a secret. Well, thank you. Uh, now, there's perhaps some controversy as to what that means. Some uh, Zelda players may think it uh, pertains to the overworld map that the top right hand corner space of the map is a secret to get to that space. Um, I personally think it has to do with this level indicating what, what room the Triforce is in. Because um, now here's the map right here so let's grab the map. Again every level has a map as well as a compass. If you look at that map up in the top left there, um, if you kind of see the shape of an eagle, then you are very good and you're dead on because every level in uh, in Zelda here has kind of like a name of a animal or object or something and this one happens to be level one, the eagle. And when I look at that and I see the blinking dot, in the eastern wing, or the eastern peninsula, if you will. That's what I believe that hint is leading you to, to go in that direction to get to the Triforce. Some people may disagree, but that's just how I see it. Okay, so some more Stalfos. We'll get a key from him. Now you may say, Mike A10, why are you heading towards an obvious dead end in the map? And I say, well, the obvious dead end would actually have an obvious treasure at the end of it. And that's why we're going this way. Now as you enter this next room, there's some new enemies here. These guys will stab you as you walk in between them, so you want to be quick. I wasn't apparently quick enough. Actually, I think my emulator kind of made me walk down a little bit. Um, and these guys I'm going to fake out quick. You want to be careful with them. Sometimes the emulator makes me slightly walk in a direction I don't want to go. Not making this up, friends. Um, okay, so here is your first treasure found in a dungeon in the game. And it is the bow. We don't have any arrows yet, but... Well, we don't need them right away, we just need to get the item so we can have it after when we when we do get arrows. And so now we must get out of here. And backtrack to where we were a few rooms ago. And now we will head in the direction of that Triforce. These guys are Gariahs. They are the red version of them. There's a stronger blue version of Gariahs. And 
And here's another treasure that we find. This is the boomerang. Very handy weapon. Uh, well, maybe not so much a weapon, but uh, item. We'll just call it. Um, you can throw it using the B button, because you put it on your B button. And uh, when it hits an enemy, it will paralyze it. Most enemies. Some enemies don't get paralyzed by it. Some do. Now in this next room, the enemies in here you want to be careful of. They come out of the walls, and they're basically hands that come out of the walls. If they grab you, they're going to take you all the way back to the beginning of the level, which we don't want. It's not so much of an ordeal with this level, because it's a little small, but l later on in the game, that's going to get to be pretty... Uh, Yeah, you don't want to be taken back to the beginning of a very long level. So, now that noise you hear is actually the boss in the next room. I guess it's some sort of roaring sound or whatever. Um, so without further ado, let's enter. And this is Aquamentus. Now normally Aquamentus is really easy to beat. If you have full hearts, you could just shoot them from back here and you kill them that way, but... Um, I shamefully don't have full life, so I'm going to have to get in close here and stab at him. And you kind of have to sort of hit him in the, in the face or the neck, so... But not too many hits to before you can kill him. Whoa! Alright, just come in close and get you. There. Okay, so when you kill a boss, you get a heart container, which adds one total heart to your total life up top there. And as we enter the room with the Triforce, there is the Triforce piece. As we grab it, we listen to the rewarding music. And it transports us to the outside of the level. And fills up our hearts also. So, feel accomplished if you're playing along on your own game, because you've just completed level 1. Level 1's pretty easy, I won't lie. But more difficult levels await us later in the game. Oh, and uh, if you press your start button, you can see we have that piece of the Triforce starting to show in our little handy Triforce viewing area. Yes, indeedy. <clears throat> okay, so let's see. What else as we now walk along the world map here? Uh, we want to go to level 2 next, but uh, there's a couple things we can take a look at before we get there. Let's go over here for a second. Passed by these guys. These guys, um, these guys don't bother too much with them. They can get in your way, but you can only hit them if they come to a complete stop. So don't bother too much if you're in a hurry, waiting for them to hook around. Uh, now I want to show you this. If you go up here, there's a pond with a fairy, and if you walk up to the fairy pond fountain, uh, the fairy will heal you. So. That's good to know. If you're in a bind and you happen to be passing by a spot where you know one of those is, you can drop in and, you know, get healed. Good stuff. Alright. Some more... Some more Octorox. If you know pretty much any game in the Zelda series, then you probably know what an Octorok is. Um, so, anything I could show you quick here before our time is up for this video. Um, you can change what item you use in B. Um, I can't select the bow right now because I don't have any arrows purchased yet. Um, and yeah, so that'll do it for this video. So uh, next time we will be proceeding towards level 2. Thanks again for watching!